Colorado Springs, Colorado. October 9th, 2002. The police staff her. She's covered in blood. Suspect's not in the area then, right? I don't think so. She doesn't know. Okay, what was she She's stabbed? She's barely conscious. Paramedics rush the victim to the hospital. Her lung is pierced. Her throat and face are slashed. Surgeons race to operate before the victim goes critical. Jaworski was the lead investigator for the case of the woman who was brutally stabbed. When I arrived on scene, we identified the victim as 48-year-old Judy Oldham, an employee of a local hardware store. After years of suffering depression, Judy Oldham was starting to turn her life around. The on-scene patrol deputy told me they found Miss Oldham lying inside of her doorway, bleeding profusely from the chest and the head. I observed a blood trail. I also observed what appeared to be human flesh, part of Judy's ear, which had been bitten off. This was personal. This wasn't random. Somebody had a grudge against Judy. Jaworski's only lead is the victim. That first night, Judy was going to be going into surgery. We weren't going to be able to talk to her. It's really frustrating when the only witness you have to a crime is unable to talk to you. The next morning, Jaworski gets a break. I was contacted by one of Judy's relatives who told me that somebody I should be looking at is a lady by the name of Henrietta Villarreal. She told me Henrietta was somehow involved with Judy's boyfriend and that there was tension between Judy and Henrietta. Jaworski asks Henrietta to come in to talk. She does so willingly. Hi, Henry, and I'm Bob Jaworski. I'm a detective with the sheriff's office. I'll let you know right off. You're not under arrest. Door's unlocked. You're free to leave at any time, OK? Um, you know Judy? I don't know her. I know about her because her and my boyfriend were messing around, and I found out about it. I could tell we have a woman scorned here. But is she capable of attempted murder? Tell me about your day yesterday. Uh, let's see. He got up, made him coffee. I offered to make him some, and then I was going to take my dog out for a walk, and I oh, wanted to kill him. It was about 8 o'clock. Went to the post office, went out to the balcony, smoked a cigarette. She was able to spit facts out right and left on times and who she was with and what the, the conversation was about. Henrietta had so many details during that interview, but it was very rehearsed. We knew she was covering up for something. We went back to bed and went to sleep. What time did you guys go to bed? Around 6, 7 o'clock. Okay. Just at the time, Judy Oldham was being butchered. Surprisingly, Henrietta's alibi checks out. Her live-in boyfriend doesn't recall her leaving the house that evening. Henrietta's boyfriend backed up her story. I had no probable cause to arrest Henrietta for this attack, so I had to let her go. After a week in the ICU, Judy Oldham finally recovered enough to speak. When she talked to me, she was very adamant that it was Henrietta Villarreal who attacked her. We brought Henrietta Villarreal back into the hot seat. If she lied during her first interrogation, how can Jaworski get her to tell the truth this time? I called Detective Cliff Porter to join me in the interrogation. Someone who will play any role necessary to get a confession. I've been mad. I've been gay, straight, Catholic, Lutheran, Baptist, whatever the bad guy needs me to be in order to feel comfortable telling me the truth. Started. 
Okay. I'm not being arrested, am I? No, not at this time. Okay, I'm just asking. <laughs> okay. Because I told you everything the other night. I did. You didn't go out anywhere that night? Oh, no, I've been drinking. I don't drink and drive. Henrietta didn't bring up drinking in the first interview. I just bought a six pack. I drank it all. Okay. I think I went over there to find out why she, she messed with him. You know, honestly, the last thing I really remember is punching her. That's it. That's the last thing I do remember. How's it lead up to that? She opens the door, then what's said? Try to run us through it. I don't remember. Let me think. Okay. I do remember we argued. I think I called her a slut. Okay. I'm pretty sure I did. That's how I refer to her, slut Judy. I remember grabbing her hair. And then I must, must have seen something there, and I remember reaching out for it. Try to remember what you saw there and what you were reaching for. I'm seeing a knife. I, I think that's probably what, I mean, like I said, I, no, I wait, hold on. I'm having a hard time remembering. Porter sees that Henrietta is not quite ready to confess. He takes another approach. And what was going through your head when you first knocked on that door? To see the woman's eyes that had sex with the man you love, you deserve his loyalty, you deserve his faithfulness. There you are knocking on his door. I could tell okay. Detective Porter was building a rapport with Henrietta. Okay, I want, I want you to focus here, because we're making some progress, and you can see how we made that progress. I want you to focus for me and get to the point. I know he needs to be alone with Henrietta to build that relationship. The heart is probably the only organ you can't bandage. And I understand that. I don't like to discuss my personal stuff, but I can tell you I work long swing shift hours and I'm not on my first marriage. So I know where you're coming from. I'm still happily married to my first wife. I'm using tactical deception here so that Henrietta feels more comfortable. We know that you went over there. We know that she got stabbed, okay? Um, so how's that go? How do you reach? Do you reach, I mean, is it one of these where you're just doing this? Is it one of these where you're going like this? Is it something like this? I mean... Let me think. I see it turned and... I think I went like this. After four hours in the interrogation room, Jaworski and Porter get their confession. <sighs> this time, Henrietta doesn't get to go home. To me, to hurt the bitch, just wanted to go talk to her. Love is one of the oldest motives in the book for committing crime. There's very few reasons that pop up as much, even in today's modern world in law enforcement. Judy's life's changed forever. She's not only physically scarred from the stab wounds and the disfigurement of her ear, she's emotionally scarred, all because of the jealous rage of one woman. Oh, 